Okay. Good morning. I think we'll get started now. Um, my name is Jeff, and I am a teacher, and I'm currently working with Brilliant Labs in the Halifax area. And just wanted to start by saying thank you to all the classes from all over Nova Scotia joining in this morning. Um, so I have a book to read with you, and that will um, help launch into a little activity that students can do either with you during one of your class calls today, or if you would rather them do it uh, in off-camera time. It's totally up to uh, teachers how you guys organize this. Um, but to get started, um, I'll just introduce you to our book on your screen right now is The Perfect Nest by Catherine Friend, and it's illustrated by John Manders. Uh, so when I first picked up this book and I had a look, um, it got me thinking about that idea of nests and what is the perfect nest? And maybe you've seen one in real life before. Uh, they're, they're, sometimes they're hard to find because birds are really sneaky about where they put them sometimes. They want them to be a bit protected from the weather. Uh, so maybe like within a whole bunch of branches or sometimes like under a deck or maybe in a like a by a shed or something, they'll try and find a hiding place where they'll be a safely able to have their home uh, that they'll hopefully lay some eggs in in the spring. So I did a little bit of research. I just went on and I was looking at different nest designs and have a look at some of the ones I found. So I found this nest um, looks like it's up in a tree. And I was trying to notice the materials they used. I don't know if you can tell from that picture what kinds of things they're using, but it looks like it would have been grass from last year, some sticks. There's also this, I don't think you guys can see my pointer, but along the bottom edge, it almost looks like there's like some mud or dirt being used there. It's pretty cool. Um, so some of the other ones there, they're building like on the side of a house. And I thought that owl's nest was really neat because they're using like big sticks because owls are big birds. It has, has to be able to support a lot of weight. So they need some pretty large materials to use in a nest. And that one in the bottom corner is with the baby birds in it, I thought was really cool because it, it's made from mostly like mud and clay and things like that. And the bird would have to take little tiny bits of that mud and bring it to, to the ground and up to its nest and very carefully build that nest without having hands. Isn't that amazing that birds can build these things without hands? They have to do it all with their beaks and their feet. It's incredible. Um, so I just, I did a little, I just wanted to share what I learned about nests with you um, before I got started in our story. So I think let's jump in. So I have the book in my hands that I'll be reading from, uh, but I've made the pictures nice and big for you guys. So let's, let's get started on this book. Jack the cat gathered together everything he needed. <clears throat> then he built the perfect nest, dry and cozy and just the right size. But the nest was not for Jack. With this perfect nest, he would attract a perfect chicken who would lay the perfect egg, which would make the perfect omelet for a cat like Jack. Soon enough, a chicken came along. Ay caramba, she cried, a perfect nest. And she hopped up and she laid a small egg. Then a duck waddled, waddled by. Sacre bleu, she cried, the perfect nest. The duck pushed the chicken out, hopped up and laid a medium sized egg. Then the goose lumbered by. Great balls of fire, she cried, a perfect nest. The goose pushed the duck out, hopped up and laid a large egg. Jack's mouth began to water. Three eggs would make three omelets. But then the duck leaped in onto the goose's back. This is my nest. The chicken flew up onto the duck. No, this is my nest. The three cackled and quacked and honked, but each refused to leave the perfect nest. They squished each other out for days. Each day, Jack tried to get the birds off the eggs. 
Fire, fire, he cried. They didn't move. Flood, flood, he cried. They didn't move. Wolf, wolf, he cried. But the chicken, the duck, and the goose would not move. Finally, Jack stood before them. You birds are so silly. The next farm over has an even better nest, and it's empty. Why don't one of you just use that nest? An empty nest? cried the chicken. Without a goose sitting on my head? I caramba. Sacre bleu, cried the, the duck. I am tired of smelling like the chicken. That nest is mine. Great balls of fire, cried the goose. Out of my way. And then they all flapped away. Got to show you the picture on that one. There. Alone at last, Jack returned to the nest and peeked inside. He arranged the eggs neatly in a row. Small breakfast, medium lunch, and large dinner. Jack's stomach rumbled. But then, ooh, any predictions? Can you think of what you might Think would happen next in the story. I notice a really small detail in the picture. There's something on one of the eggs. Crack. The small egg broke open and out popped a wet baby chick who looked up at Jack and said, Caramba, hola, mama. Crickety snap. The medium-sized egg broke open and out scrambled a wet baby duck who looked up at Jack and said, Sacre bleu, bonjour, mama. Crickety, crackety, boom. The largest egg broke open and out stepped a wet baby goose who looked up at Jack and said, Great balls of fire. Howdy, ma. Jack stared at the babies. What was he to do? He couldn't make omelets out of them. Dry me, dry me, dry me, cried the soggy uh, baby chick. Feed me, feed me, feed me, cried the hungry baby duck. Play, 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 cried the excited baby goose. Jack hid in the barn. The three babies found him. He hid in the woods. The three babies found him. He, Jack hid under the tractor. The three babies found him and they dragged him back to the nest. Sleep, 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 the tired babies finally whispered. Cold, 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 said the shivering babies. Jack scratched his head. Someone had to care for these babies, but there was no one else around. Jack lifted all three babies into the nest. Buenos noches, mama, said the baby chick. Bonne nuit, mama, said the baby duck. Sweet dreams, ma, said the baby goose. And then Jack climbed into the nest and the babies fell asleep. And that's when he realized that this really was the perfect nest. And that ends our story. Uh, but for you, it's going to take you into an activity with your uh, with your classmates. So for now, um, I have a bit of a challenge for you. Um, I mentioned to your teachers that, that if um, if you were going to do this today, you should have some things collected. But for some classes, you might be starting to collect today, and maybe you'll make later. So it really depends on uh, on your class situation. Um, but the activity involves using some items from nature. So whether that's some um, sticks or just some small branches or uh, long grass, or maybe you found some feathers or pieces of bark on the ground that you could use. Um, and you could use those materials along with things you have at your home, like maybe some string or you have some scissors you could use. And your task is going to be to try and build a nest. So you can think of this in a couple of different ways. You could think of it like you want to build like a, a small nest like that might look like a real one, but maybe you don't want to. Maybe you want to build a nest for a different creature or maybe even one of your stuffed animals. You could build a nest uh, that would fit something like that. So you could 
think about this in a couple different ways. This is just about uh, trying to create um, something that is made in nature as well. So teachers, I kind of leave this up to you, how you, uh, what you think will work best for your students. So I emailed you this page that's on my screen right now as well. So those are the types of materials you could use. So trying to build some kind of nest-like structure. And there's even some, uh, some ideas for activities on that page, teachers, that students could do afterwards if they wanted to at home with, uh, with somebody that's able to help out. So with that, this one's nice and quick. We're less than 15 minutes. Um, I hope you have a fantastic time making nests. And um, yeah, teachers, um, I would love to see if you're able to email me any pictures of things your students have made or if people can share with Brilliant Labs on Twitter, we would, we would love to see what you're up to.